This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stormberg, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We're now in front of the house, and yes, we're gonna do it. We'll do range test in the Ligier Miley. <laughs> it's a moped car. It can go maximum 45 kilometers per hour. It has, oh, how much was it going? Roughly 12 kilowatt hour battery. And at least the manufacturer claims that they can go 192 kilometers, or roughly there. Let's figure out how far can we actually go at VMAX, of course. So it's not every day that I can test an EV at VMAX, but okay, so the car is kind of on right now. I've charged it to 100%, maybe spending a little bit here, but that's fine. And we are just kind of idling it. So let me show you now. Voila, it is tiny. It is freaking tiny, man. Yeah. So there is some kind of radio here. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, okay, woo, wow. Um, no navigation, but that's fine. I prefer using Google navigation anyway. So the first thing I will check is distance error. So you see, from here, we are, yeah, we avoid motorways, by the way, but we are allowed to drive on ring road, but from here to Moira, that's 50 kilometer. Then I will have to follow that route exactly because I will be checking distance error. So right now, it claims that we have 155 kilometers of range left. If we, in the, this one, okay, that's odometer. This one is trip meter, I reset it. So yeah, uh, uh, hopefully this one goes up as we drive, we'll see. And then over here, yeah, heater is not needed. We have fan also not needed. Remember that no fan is always better than only fan. It's quite hot outside now. I think over 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, so we'll see how we do it. Uh, I will try to run with the windows down. I mean windows uh, closed for improved drag, but we'll see So um, yeah, it's kind of late, but this is how we do it because nowadays it's so hot If I try this in the daytime, it would be unbearable, but now in the evening and night it should be good Okay, and I didn't actually bring much um, equipment or whatever in the back. I have the charging cable there and I have some extra clothes in case it gets cold tonight. So I expect this trip to take four to five hours. And then we try to end up here because this car doesn't have any fast charging. So only two kilowatt onboard charger. Okay, anyway, let's get ready and then off we go. So you know to start, you just release the handbrake, put it in drive, check it is in drive, and then off we go. <laughs> this is so weird. Okay. Oh, at least I'm not riding a motorcycle today. Well, this feels like Puckster in a way, but then Puckster, now yeah, Puckster, you have to sit, uh, you know, kind of ride it, but at least here you sit inside a car, you have the comfort inside here. So even though it might be cold tonight, uh, I'm just we can just generate some heat in here. We generate 80 watt of heat in the car, so yeah. All right, and then I look at the navigation there, and then <laughs> let's enjoy the ride. Holy crap, I just discovered something. If we have eco mode, which we have right now, when I floor it and we have a slight uphill, it limits the power. So I'm actually struggling to go uphill and maintain 45 kilometers per hour. But what I can do is I can disable eco mode, zoop, and then we unlock the power. Uh, which mode do I use then? I, I think I can't use eco mode because if I use eco mode, like up here, I'll be crawling uphill and I have cars behind me. Yeah, okay, eco mode off then for now. Oh shit, this car is so unrefined. We are now entering the ring road. This is not motorway, so I'm actually allowed to drive here. Oh, but it's gonna be so scary. I mean, I have an i3 behind me. I've never seen, I mean, I never felt that i3 would look so big. Look at that. Holy shit. Bear with me. I have the 45 sign in the back there. You guys have to overtake me. Look at me as a tractor. Ah, it's 70 zone here. I'm flooring it. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins! Okay, one thing I noticed is that the speedometer is pretty much spot on. 45 here is actually 45 on the GPS. But I just got flashed at by some polo behind me because they couldn't overtake. But 
there is already a sign behind me saying maximum 45 kilometers per hour. I mean, how intelligent are Norwegian Nisse really? How hard is it to understand that this is the VMAX? I cannot go faster. If I had a Tesla, I would hammer you right away, Mr. Polo Boy. Just can't do it right now. We are at WAM now, or VAM, yeah. You know where the hydrogen fueling station is? It's right over there, uh, to the right of us. Man, this is scary. I pull over at the bus stop to let some cars pass, but I can't pull over at every bus stop. Fortunately, I will be driving at night uh, and there will be less traffic most of the time. And I also want to drive on stretches where people can overtake me. Let me see, how is the handling on this car? It's electric, right? We have battery in the bottom. Oh, oh, shit. oh, shit. oh damn, hands like a boat. Oh, shit. Okay, but we will not enter the motorway here. We will just cross this one and then keep going on the smaller road, the B roads. You know, I realize what this thing is. It's a time machine because it takes you back 10, 20 years ago when the electric cars were really shitty. They couldn't go that fast. They didn't have any comfort and nobody cared about them. They were just laughing at them. And look today, they ain't laughing now, right? But yeah, it is <laughs> this is what people used to uh, what people have to put up with if they wanted to go electric. Short range, tiny cars, goofy looking. Yeah, the reason why we have it like this now in this car in 2023 is because of weight restriction and you want teenagers to drive them or kids rather. Yeah, uh, but okay, it's even after I've been driving for a while now, if I can choose with the, oh, oh, if I can choose between this uh, Liger or the Parkster. I'll take the Liger any day, man. Uh, the comfort here is actually way better than riding some kind of motorcycle thing and it's open and it's noisy and windy. And yeah, here, this is better. We have passed Chesmokosha. We have done 19.7 kilometers so far. And Gom claims 115 more kilometers. Hmm, that's not 200 or 190 total. Uh, let's see then. Oh yeah, this is way more chill landscape and also plenty of places for uh, cars behind to hammer. So now I cracked the window slightly open also on that side to get a little bit of circulation here. But eventually if it gets colder, I can probably just shut down the, I mean shut off the, the outside. But then I'm not sure it, it would be, you feel a bit cramped in here. So a little bit of uh, air circulation is good. We have arrived at Moira. This is a checkpoint. So it's supposed to be 50.1 kilometer. I look at it on Google. And then the trip meter uh, reports 50.8. So the trip meter is uh, under -report, uh, over reporting a little bit, 1.4%. Uh, all right, uh, we're just gonna keep driving. Where is it, where is it? I'm gonna check here. So how much do we have now? We have 106 kilometers of range left. Oh. This is gonna take a while. But let me just get out a little bit, stretch my legs. Oh man, it's been a long... What? There's a party over there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so here's Moira. We are slightly north of um, uh, Gardenmoen Airport right now. Let me check by the way. Do you have... Yeah, okay. So we have low beams on. Yeah, and the back. First I was driving around with the uh, park lights, I think, but now we have, yeah, okay. So, this is good. Okay, uh, let's just keep driving further north. I have to figure out where the heck I'm supposed to go. Oh, we are driving along a lake now called Hudorsvannet. So, fun fact, Yesheim and other uh, municipalities around here, they get uh, the water from Hudorsvannet. It's way bigger than uh, Maridalsvannet that Oslo gets the water from. So actually, because now we have quite dry period, and in Oslo we are asked to save uh, or to conserve water. Over here, I don't think you need to conserve any water. But I'm gonna show something here, interesting. So now we have low beam, right? Okay, and then uh, if I switch to high beam, like this, then look, this is high beam, low beam. Like, huh, what the heck? But if you gently push it, then you see that there is an extra 
layer of light there but when you actually lock it in this happens it turns off the high uh, the, the low beam completely and then only turns on the high beam and i was i had to check again like how is it is it correct yes it is correct you see here low beam and then yeah so this is really weird light pattern i would prefer to have it like this but no okay i guess if you have high beam you're no, not supposed to look at stuff close to you you're only supposed to look far ahead <laughs> but it seems like the light is a bit uh, misaligned uh, not sure it just shines really high huh what well, 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 if it's like this if i press halfway and that looks nice but then i have to press it like this so what i probably end up doing is, is to drive around with low beam because i'm driving so dog slow anyway <laughs> you see we're here food on wow that's that's actually further north than Minnesun. Holy crap, look at this distance. You see, we drove from Oslo down there. 75 kilometers. Wait, what was the distance? Let me check here. Uh, since we left Oslo. Wow! 79, okay, corrected. Roughly 75 kilometers to get this at this point. So, uh, yeah, whoa. Can we just go to Nebines maybe? Yeah, let's go there. Okay, let me see. Oh, sorry. I mean, just there. Yeah, that's only 18 kilometers away. Okay, that's gonna take a while. Let's go. Wow, it's so quiet here at night. And also, we are now in mid of uh, June and uh, you can see the days are quite long. It, it actually doesn't become pitch dark nowadays. So it's uh, 42 minutes past midnight and there's still some light in the skies. We are now at Nebenes Supercharger and you see here, I think I'm gonna drive via Moira and then backtrack the same way I came from. That's 67 kilometers total. And then here we have 77 kilometers of range left. Hmm, okay, sounds good. Let me show you here. So you see here where the superchargers, they are actually not lit up. Hmm, these one are lit up, huh? That's weird. I wonder if this is uh, sensor-based, but okay, whatever. Look here. Hmm, what do we have here? Chem power. Ooh, lots of chem power. Finally, the upgrade is this site has been slow 50 kilowatt for the longest time. There were, there were four of these. If you look at videos from uh, 2015, 16, 17, roughly, I would be charging those Konas here, whatever, uh, ENV200 here on the 50 kilowatt chargers. And then they installed some, uh, uh, I think it was Efasec, some high power charger. It was ABC always, wait, ABB. Well, I mean, always be broken. It was broken all the time. And there was some AC. Now they just blah, slapped down. Yeah, lots of chem power chargers right next to this site here. So. Nice, I think I will drive down to the gas station and um, go to the restroom and then we continue over there. Oh, this is a tiny car. Ligier. <laughs> Wait, what? Huh? Recharge, they have hyperchargers over here. Three of them. Well, we were just up there. That's where the superchargers are. Wow, recharge, they don't play around. So maybe there's a reason why it is expensive uh, per kilowatt hour because investing in chargers also costs money. So yeah, I don't mind paying a little bit uh, high price sometimes so I can charge almost anywhere. So I already noticed by the way that um, recharge and so okay, they haven't uh, used many tritium and ABB chargers lately. They tend to go for hypercharger or chem power hmm i wonder why we're now passing by sugar k doll i only did all to the left here yeah i come here a lot and then you see here is where i enter the motorway normally but this time we will just drive through the roundabout and then this way here leads us to Moira. Oh, yeah, just stay on the B roads. 
Oh shit! No, what the heck, man? Some microphone fell over there. Shit! Need to pick it up. We just passed non the start now, and uh, yeah. I mean, who cares how shitty the infotainment is? As long as it supports Android Auto. Yeah, all is good. But, uh... <laughs> what the heck is that shit? It lacks bass, it lacks detail, it lacks uh, stereo perspective. <laughs> it would have been better if I brought my USB a speaker and I put it in a trunk. At least I'll have more bass. <laughs> I like to move it, move it. I, I like, like to move, move it, move it. I, I like, like to move, move it, move it. it. You yeah. like to move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. We are back at Wham, where the hydrogen refueling station is. And then the trip meter now shows, oh, it's freaking bright, yeah. Almost 150 kilometers. And it claims 23 kilometers left. Oh, okay. Not too shabby. Okay, so, uh, hmm. Wait, wait, are we in the highlands? Or, oh shit, we are entering cringe land which is that uh, this is a 60 zone coming up soon where I can, uh, where people have a hard time overtaking. But on the other hand, I noticed that many, many Norwegians, they are super passive. Like I had people behind me, not now, uh, but I had people behind me who were just camping behind me for the longest time, even though they had plenty of opportunities to overtake me, like straight lines, you know, uh, those short, middle uh, strips and whatever uh, but still they didn't overtake me uh, well 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 we have the low battery warning now it appeared at uh, 19 kilometers left i'm not sure if it's based on state of charge or estimated range so yeah we have been getting i mean we have been having one dot here for the longest time so right we're getting close now to home it's actually getting brighter. What's the time now? Oh, let me see. Almost three at night. Okay, let's go. Let's finish this. Gruru now coming up. We are back at Arnebu and man, you know, with this car or this, I don't know what you should call it, it's a car, but with this vehicle, I can feel how shit the, the, the asphalt is around here. The, they haven't really maintained their asphalt. It's just in terrible state, man. Just look, freaking potholes everywhere. Normally with other cars, I don't feel it that much. But uh, here, yes. Oh, oh, oh. So now I'm just going to drive a little bit back and forth. I'm down to nine kilometers of range left. So, um, as always, we have to go deep then. Oh, you know, I actually, when I drive now, I try to avoid, oh, the rough asphalt. I, <laughs> I have developed this sense of avoiding the middle patch, which tends to be quite rough. Like, if, you see, if I don't pay attention and only drive in the rough places, <laughs> yeah. Oh, just puddle, puddle, puddle. Oh, oh, oh. Welcome to Alnabru. Uh, uh, uh. You see, we have a slight uphill now and towards the end it seems like the car struggles to maintain speed wow only 40 kilometers per hour i'm flooring it oh 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 we have power limit are we gonna see turtle mode uh well we basically had turtle mode since we started <laughs> we are done d-o-n and we managed to drive 171.7 kilometers with one kilometer left. <laughs> yeah, didn't dare to go deeper than this. Uh, so uh, if we look at this, okay, what we can do is take one kilometer at this one, and then we have to correct for the distance error, 1.4%. Uh, so that means 170 kilometers of range. Okay, close enough and actually very impressive. It took forever to drive it down here. 
but now we have to find out how much energy was it. So we're going to like we're going to use the method of charging the car, and then um, we count some charging losses because this car does not show you any, or I don't know what you call it. This moped does not show you any consumption numbers, but I still want to know. Okay, I moved the car as close as possible to the charging station because I don't want to use an extension cord. But actually, when I move it the last time now, uh, suddenly it refused to uh, to drive anywhere. Uh, seems like uh, that was it. The battery is dead. <laughs> Good thing I rolled in here just in time. So uh, yeah, now we see. I have this adapter here. I'll show you. It's from Metron. This one. I use it with a electric bike and uh, what is cool about this one is that you take type 2 and it creates a shuku so we have some uh, switches here so what you do is just plug it in and then you turn on the first switch and it initiates some handshake and then the second switch and now it will energize this shuku and then we just plug it in so this is this this adapter here is brilliant you can use it for electric bikes you can use it for you know, uh, toy cars like that or you could even use it for anything you want to connect shuko versus type 2 like ecoflow or yeah charging your phone <laughs> let's see if this one will reach all the way there oh shit it doesn't i have to hook up an extension cord all right, Uncle Bjorn's cowboy connection has been completed. So yeah, it just runs a little bit over here. Okay, that's fine. At least it connects. And what is important is that if you look now at uh, the EC app, you see that it's pulling nine amps. Yeah. Okay. And then if you close this one, new session. Yeah, this one updates a little bit slow, but it is charging. So uh, let me see, to, uh, how many hours will it take? If it's two kilowatt roughly into the battery, then roughly in five, six hours we should be done. So let's come back and see eventually once it stops, how many kilowatt hour it pulled from the, from the, well, from the socket. It is now noon the next day. I got some nice sleep, uh, partly sleep, partly woken up by the family and baby. But okay, anyway, the car has been uh, charged to 100%, I believe, I'm not sure. But yeah, I keep calling the car, but there, see here. So, this is what it looks like on um, uh, the EC app. Uh, yeah, you see that uh, it's pulling a little bit of power. Hmm, really? Oh. Well, I wonder if this is because the, the plug is energized for a long time. But okay, so it will not stop the session. You can see here, view session. Wait. Uh, if you use session 12.9 kilowatt hour, but um, it doesn't stop it until I press the plug. Uh, but, oh, sorry, the, the button. So that's what I'm going to do now. We might as well unplug this one for now. But then uh, you have to click, click, zoop. Okay, and now the session should have stopped. Yeah, so if you go to uh, charging consumption and then find the previous session, charging session here. We can see that, uh, no, I have to go to June. Wow, really? 13.7 kilowatt hour. Uh, I'm not sure how much we should uh, deduct in uh, charging loss. Let me do some math here. Okay, so um, we pull 13.7 uh, kilowatt hour from the plug, and then this time I calculate 10% charging loss. Well, charging loss because the plug was energized for actually roughly three, four hours maybe after it finished charging. I'm not sure how much it actually pulled. There are also some limitation there. But okay, 10% round about there could be 8%, but um, this gives us 12.3 uh, kilowatt hour into the battery. That means that the battery was pretty close to empty then. That's why it shut down eventually. Um, but okay, that means 73 watt hour per kilometer. That is high, man. Because uh, think about this, we are cruising at 45 kilometers per hour, which is close to the hypermiling speed. And um, when you hypermile a Model 3, you can go as low as around 60, 65 watt hour per kilometer. Also, when I hypermile at Kona, okay, that was slightly high, but think about this. That's a, a, an EV that is a lot heavier. We're talking about 16, no, no, more like 
18, 1900 kilograms. This is 425, wasn't it? Uh, so I actually wonder what makes this uh, car leaguer so uh, inefficient compared to how it could be. You can imagine if Tesla tried to make something that was super small and light. Is it aerodynamic? Um, we were driving so slow. That's the whole thing about uh, air, uh, about hypermiling is that you drive so slow that aerodynamic doesn't become that significant anymore. It's more of um, drivetrain inefficiency. There's one thing though. I suspect maybe the belt drive is inefficient. I should have checked that yesterday if we look at the thermal camera and you can probably see that the belt might have heated up because of friction naturally or other places here. But okay, so that means that yeah, um, it's great that we have around 12 kilowatt hour battery here, but if they made it more efficient, let's say they lower it to around 50 watt hour per kilometer, they could have gone away with smaller battery or they could get more range. But I feel like 170 kilometers of range is so long. It takes roughly four hours to drive it down that for me, I wouldn't mind having only around, let's say 10 or nine kilowatt hour, still pretty good range, but then put in something more powerful uh, as an onboard charger because the onboard charger is two kilowatt which fits fine if you have a Shuko because you can't or you shouldn't charge much or you shouldn't pull too much power from the Shuko anyway over time but if they actually made let's say a, a 7.2 kilowatt uh, or 7.4 kilowatt onboard charger then you but then you need type 2 instead and you can also of course also have a Shuko then you will be charging faster and you don't need to have that big battery you will save cost and weight but you will still have good enough range, but you will charge a lot faster. So that is just my opinion about this. Uh, it, I feel like this is uh, kind of weirdly balanced, but I don't know what you guys think. This is just my opinion. Maybe it doesn't count because I'm not using this car as it was intended to do, <laughs> which is drunken people, teenagers, two young teenagers, and people who lost their driver's license. But okay, anyway, now I have tested it. And I think this will be the last video, fortunately for you guys. Yes, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.